Trump has had this bee in his bonnet now about the lack of proper expenditure by most of the other NATO members on defence. It should be 2% of GDP goes on defence. And actually, almost nobody pays that. The but UK says, does. So he says, well, why, why actually is the United States stumping up all the cash for defending people in NATO if NATO countries are not paying what they should be paying? Has he got a point? You know, because I, I hate it when I'm forced to agree with you, because it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just sort of, a, sort of slightly counterintuitive. You could do uh, what I do and just <laughs> yeah. not agree with him. <laughs> but on this occasion, I do. Look, Trump's got one thing right and three things wrong. The one thing right is we don't pay enough for our defence. By the way, that applies to Britain. We pay the, the, the 2 point, the two percent, but actually a lot of it goes in areas not about defence. Mm. The rest of Europe doesn't pay enough, and they ought to, and we've been saying that for a long time. The things he's got wrong is, you know, America's good at hard defence. We're good at soft defence. Mm. They don't spend enough on soft defence. Hard defence is about winning wars. Soft defence is about, present, uh, about preventing them, and that's mm. really important. And Trump should realise that if America spent a bit more on trying to prevent wars rather than winning them, we'd have a much more balanced he's... defence strategy. The second thing is that this is a moment for NATO to stand together. It's a moment for solidarity, and he's breaking that up. That's bad, and it's bad news. And the third is NATO is about defending international, forgive me, Piers is going to offend you, liberal values in our, in our lifestyle. I, I don't and support I think, liberal values. And, and I think Trump is an enemy of liberal values. And that's the thing that's so frightening. For 100 years, we've had an American, an American president who seemed to be on our side supporting liberal values. And at but present, doesn't he just see Trump everything? is somebody who, right, who, Patrick, doesn't just, who, doesn't, who doesn't support them at all. Doesn't he <clears> actually <throat> just see everything through the prism of business? To, to, to Trump, everything's a deal. Right, he thinks a lot of the deals that America's caught up in, whether it's NAFTA, whether it's NATO, whether it's the, the Paris Accords mm, on climate change, mm. he just thinks the deals are bad. And he's saying, look, you do a better deal, I'll be fine. But he, I'm not going to let America get screwed anymore. A lot yeah, but... of people in Britain might think, you know, what we could do with a bloke like that running well, our country. Yeah, but Susanna's right about this, and the, the, the point is that when you do deal, you do deal on the international scene. You have to do deals with others, and if you're going to do that, it's multilateral deals that matter. But he not prefers to do bilateral deals. Yeah, but that'll smash the whole international well, system. Well, it might change it, but why, why is that necessarily a bad thing? I, I mean, but, let's just... Look, because okay. America... Because you, at some point, you have to include <laughs> everybody so that everybody rises up a little bit, not America first rising up above, it, above everyone else being it, destroyed. It's That's very close to... Is that, but it's something actually about something a bit more. There are no domestic issues any longer because every issue has an international. If you will not work internationally, you cannot solve any problems locally, not crime, not a clean environment, not a strong economy. And Trump says, I can rerun the world as though it was 100 years ago, that it was all bilateral systems, mm. rather than strengthening well, you, the international You could be system. talking about Brexit. You could be talking about Brexit. It's the same phenomenon, Susanna. Um, exactly okay. the well, same. Well, Ashton, great to see you. Nice um, we we'll probably agree with more than, we, than you think, actually. I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah, only if you take the waistcoat off. <laughs> the waistcoat is a symbol <laughs> of England pride today. But you're an I... Irishman like me, Piers. Yes, I am. But today, I'm English. Traitor. And the moment we're knocked out, <laughs> I'm back to being Irish again. That's the way it works. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, we'll we're joined mm. uh, by Malcolm Rifkind. Uh, now, Malcolm Rifkin, uh, Sir Malcolm. Um, yeah, I'm not going to compete in Croat or any other language except English. And, and how do you like my waistcoat, out of interest? Well, I can't see it from where I am, but this I'm sure it's very pretty. I'm waistcoat. sure it's very attractive, and I'm sure you wear it overnight in bed as well. <laughs> rather like, rather like Jacob Rees-Mogg in his double-breasted pajamas. Are you, an, are you an England supporter, or would you support anyone but England? Well, that's a very good point. I'm, of course, I'm of Scottish background. Yeah. I f I f I'm cheering for England uh, uh, simply because I think they're doing a fantastic job. I'm. Uh, very much impressed by Gareth Southgate, not just what the clothes he wears, but the way he's leading that team. I'm not a great football enthusiast generally, but I'm caught up in the excitement like everybody else. Yeah, so that's I the actually... kind of attitude we want, Sir Malcolm. And I wish well, well, let, me tell you, that. let me tell you why we're on these uh, slightly <laughs> more lighter matters. I'm the only person who's ever united Celtic and Rangers fans. I managed once to get 60,000 of them booing me simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> that's, when, that's when we banned alcohol at Scottish football matches. Well, well 